In this video, I'm going to show you how to save thousands of dollars running your own automations without using Zapier or Make.com. This tool is called N&N. &N. It's open source and it can be self-hosted on a server. Without further ado, let's dive in. So I prepared a document here, guys, um, to show you how to get started with N&N. &N. Now, there's two, there's two versions N&N has offered. One is the paid version, but today we're going to talk a bit more, you know, a lot more on the, on the free version, okay? I will touch on the paid version for now. It's called NAN Cloud. Following this link here, guys, you can, oops, you can, let me just delete this bullet point here. You can, hype, yeah, it's hyperlink, I'll share this document in the description as part of this video. But you can click this link and you can log in and you can potentially uh, get a self host, you know, get a cloud version. It will cost uh, similar pricing to Zapier or Make, but for anyone who is starting out, wanting to learn the application now when it comes to tech there's two things right there's always your application side and what we call infrastructure side so this tutorial here is to show you how to establish the technology infrastructure that can then that can have your application sit on top of it and you can start to you know in a way manipulate or orchestrate your, your application to make it work for yourself or your clients or any other business that wants automation right or, in a or ai automations now that and it, and it can also do AI agents, right? So this section here, guys, check it out. You know, if you were the you know, if you want to spend more time developing the NN application, then go for the first option. But this tutorial here is to show you as well how to save costs, not having to pay NN cloud, but to use NN and 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 and, and the, you know, so in a way own it, own the the the, the application, and you go in and maintain it upgrade it but at the same time you'll be pulling some of those upgrades from and you know as, as a software so this link here today the the, the tutorial is around how to put it up into Heroku which is what I've recommended for 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 you guys to do because Heroku is very, very easy to, to set up and you know one of the things that one of the things that I often you know toss between is like how can I get to where I want to <laughs> as quickly as we can so simple is often better than trying to find the cheapest so this is already free so a lot of servers out there that are hard to configure so you know AWS or GCP for 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 one seat that's you know steeper learning curve so I recommend you know just jump just dive into Heroku if you ever if you're starting out to learn the infrastructure side of things yeah so let's without further ado let's go in and have a look at this this is a page where you can sign up to call out here and you can you can check out the pricing as well if you have not exposed to heroku and what it is you just change this to heroku pricing i think i've called out five to ten dollars per month y they used to be free but now yeah now they're doing the echo version where you can start to host your apps and we're on the standard plan I believe, yeah, we're on the standard plan, which is not much. Um, but yeah, you can you can opt to the 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 basic one to start with as part of this practice. And as you go and scale, you can start to look at other ones as well. But yeah, I would start to look at this first two before you go into the other ones. So five to ten dollars investment for this server and get hands-on practice as to how and and start to learn the concept of infrastructure, tech infrastructure that can host your application. So yep, da, 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 da. starting out, go to her. And b if you're building a business, then go to self-hosted. Why? Because you can save a lot of money not paying Zapier or make.com. Quickest way to deploy, let's go. So this is the dashboard here where you will log in, right? Let me pause this. And All right, I'm logged in. So let's have a look at this page now. It's loading, okay. So as you come into this login page, it will start to ask you to plug in, you know, things that you want. So in my document guide here, I have started to, you know, show you some stuff, you know, some of the things, the examples that you can you can start to punch in uh, to make this work, right? So pretty straightforward. You can call your app name, you know, another test with Lim, and it will tell you whether or not it's like available. Green is good, right? So, and you can choose your server. For me, I'm in Australia, but I opted using the United States because it doesn't have any Australian ones. Um, but yeah, if you're in EU, then then you can you can pick this one, or you can if you're closer to 
whichever country, um, the explanation between all this um, location selection is like, if you're closer to that location, then the 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 there will be less lag, uh, when you know when 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 things are getting served within your environment. But it doesn't matter as much for 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 lightweight use as you scale and grow. Then this will become more and more an issue. Then you might potentially look at migrating some of this app into AWS or GCP for more robust solution. But I would say for you know small medium sized company, you probably won't have to worry about this for a long time. Okay. Everything else I'll leave it as default. I won't even pet this. This is like a promo or something. Just dis dismiss that. And then everything else here, you can leave it as default. But time zone, you can check out this documentation and you can look at how they want you to plug in your time zone. You know, it's often in this kind of format. So for me, it will be sure. Yeah, this is my format. So if I copy that, put it in here. Again, time zone is. Is I would I would change this to your to your own time zone just because then everything will be aligned, especially timestamp. In in programming, you want the timestamp to be ac as accurate as you can. Otherwise, you'll start to when you start to use the concept of crone or something along that line, then you will have a lot of problems if you don't have time zone uh, positioning accurately. And when you start to have you know, for for ourselves, we have international clients, EU, UK. The encryption key. This is a interesting one which I put together a document to show you how to set this up so if you have terminal which I do and you can start to use terminal to to punch in this command here which I've already given you another hot tip here if you don't understand what this command does just copy this and ask GPT what is this <laughs> and paste it in GPT and you'll be able to see the explanation. But essentially what it does is it creates a unique key, encrypted key that you can then use for, for this for this section here. Okay. Now it says here, set up your NAN -en encrypt -en encryption key to avoid Heroku overriding it and cause authentication to fail. Okay. So this is a one time activity. If you follow this step here, put it in there and you'll be able to deploy the app accordingly. Okay, and then obviously the webhook is something that you will be using in the future as you build your automation within and end. So all these things make sure you using, you know, the right naming convention, so on and so forth. So let me just do this test. Let me see if I can get my terminal up, and I will do this. This is my encrypted key. Okay. All right, got my encrypted key. Boom. Okay. I think that's pretty much it. I'll just leave it as US. So once I've done that, I click deploy app, guys. And then it will just be running. Right? So it will just be running. Let me just minimize myself. And it'll show you all this green ticks. It'll take some it'll take a couple minutes. So I might pause this video and let it run. All right, I'm back, guys, but it's still running, and this is how it looks like when you do the, you know, when it's still building. So you'll show you the build log. The build log is essentially what it does in the back end, and this is like, obviously, you know, what Heroku has done to show you what are things that they are doing in the back end, but you don't, you know, yeah, you don't necessarily have to know all these things, but it's kind of good to know that it's working and it's doing all these things. Yeah, let's, uh, let me pause this video for a in a couple more minutes and after it's done then we'll resume the tutorial oh it's, it's done so let's have a look at this so your app successfully deployed and so you can view it or you can manage all the other apps so let's go view another test with limb again I'll, I'll probably yeah there you go boom so as you get to this page then um, your your application is now live on this Heroku setup and you can punch in your first name, last name, email. So let's go boom. Bleh. Passwords like whatever you want. Right. So I'm probably going to destroy this, you know, remove this server afterwards, but I'm be strong. No. And once you hit next, then this is your NNN server. Uh, I just, I just, oh, skip. Yeah. 
So this is a landing page of NAN and you can start building. If you find this tutorial helpful, make sure you comment, let me know. And if you like this kind of tutorials and you want to see more of this, then click like, subscribe to this channel. I lead a team of engineers and automation experts in helping businesses grow with automations and AI. So if you do find yourself stuck in any of these automation slash AI workflows or building AI agents, feel free to reach out. I have my link in the description below and we'll chat soon. Ciao.